Hi everyone, good to see you all again. Today we are going to learn how to create a stained canvas painting. To create a stained canvas painting, you need the following supplies. A design template of your choice. You can take a plywood or even a cardboard or a packing carton can be used as your canvas. Faber-Castell glue range. I've taken the clear glue from Faber-Castell, the dual tip glue from Faber-Castell and white glue for mixing it to make our clay. And say maybe we need some coconut oil, corn flour, a mixing bowl, some food colors of your choice, white acrylic paint from Faber-Castell, fabric paints, a palette for mixing, scissors, grip handle brushes from Faber-Castell, and a toothpick. Now let's learn how to create our stained canvas painting. As a first step, let's see what all bases we can use for the stained canvas art. For this, you can you do the artwork on a ready-made canvas board which is available in any art stores or you can use Ferretex board. Ferretex board is a kind of a board which is smooth on one side and the other side is rough. So you can use that for this. On the smooth side, you can work or you can use a MDF. MDF is a compressed plywood board which can be used on both the sides which is very smooth on both sides. It, uh, it has also other name. It's called as new wood. You can also use a packing carton or a cardboard like this. I have stuck three or four plies together to get this thickness like this. You can even try it on this or you can use it on a waterproof plywood like this. So there are various surfaces which you can try with this canvas painting. I have chosen a wooden plank for this activity. So this is a waterproof plywood. Uh, like 3 mm or a 4 mm thickness would be good enough to work and the size of this plywood is 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters you can even take a packing carton or a diary cover to work the same style of art i have stuck a piece of white sheet of uh, drawing paper on the wood so that it will act as a priming base you can also use white paint to apply to the entire base and get it primed like this once when you have your board like this ready you can start getting ready with it design. There are many types of designs available so you can just google and you can search all these designs. I have now drawn all these designs like uh, I have drawn an ox design here, I have drawn a fish and same way I have drawn a swan and then an elephant. So you can choose any of these designs for this style of canvas stained art. So I am just going to choose the ox design for me to work. So I am just going to cut this out with my scissors and I am going to stick it to the base. So using a scissors I'm just going to start cutting like this and we'll get it ready. As a next step, we're going to start sticking the design template to the uh, base, the wooden base. Uh, you can use a dual tip glue from Faber-Castell to stick this design template so i'm just going to apply the glue to the entire car base like this i'm going to use my spreader to spread like this so let's spread it and get it ready after spreading the glue we are going to now start sticking the design to the base like this Center your design carefully, aligning it to the edges and you can stick it like this. Make sure there are no bubbles, so carefully press it from in to out like that. You can even use a piece of cotton fabric or something to press it down like that so that you don't get any air bubbles. So go from in to out like this. So after you stick it out evenly like this, leave this design to dry for a while. In the meanwhile, we'll get ready with our clay. As a next step, we are going to make our very own air dry clay using white glue from Faber-Castell. For that, you will need a bowl and in a bowl, you will be taking some corn flour. I'm taking two tablespoons of corn flour. To this corn flour mixture, we're going to add some white glue. We're going to mix it thoroughly to make a dough. So 
Faber Castle white glue is multi-purpose. You can use it for many ideas. It's very versatile. So we're going to just squeeze this glue and we're going to take it. So let's take some glue. Uh, there isn't any particular ratio. Just have to add the glue to the required quantity. Just add little glue at a time. Mix it and see. We should get a dough consistency. So let's add it like this. And then we will add a few drops of coconut oil to grease. And we'll mix this mixture thoroughly to get a dough consistency. If you notice, I have now mixed my corn flour with white glue and a little bit of coconut oil to get this dough consistency. Uh, make sure that you don't add too much of glue or water to this because if you add water, it will get fungus on this clay. So do not add water and it will also develop cracks if you add water. So when you add the glue, please ensure to add glue little by little to get this dough consistency so that it is not very sticky or messy. So once when you get the dough like this, you can now make it a, into a ball. Apply a drop of coconut oil to it and nicely knead it like this. And without any cracks, you can seal it into a Ziploc cover and leave it to set for a while. So like this, tightly pack it and seal the Ziploc cover and leave it to set for a while. Same way, we made our air dry clay using Faber Castle white glue, corn flour and little coconut oil. There are also other ready-made clays that are air dry clay which are available in the market. This is a premium quality air dry clay. Same way, there is a terracotta air dry clay. There is a paper clay which is also available in craft shops. Uh, Sculpted is another brand of clay which, is, which can be used for air drying clay activities. And then same way Molded is another clay which has got two compounds. It's a resin based clay. You can mix these two compounds in equal ratios and you will be able to use the clay. And the clay dries within half an hour. So these are some various types of clays that are available in the market. So if you don't have the time to make this kind of a clay, you can buy these kinds of ready made clays and you can use it for this activity. As a next step, we are going to use the air dry clay which we made using Faber Castle white glue, corn flour and coconut oil. This is now ready to begin the process. As a first step, you take a fresh batch of this clay and knead it nicely like how I am doing. The clay should not have any cracks. So nicely knead it and soften the clay like this. Once when it's ready like this, you can take it in small quantities and you can start working. We're just going to make a ropes of this clay. So make it into a ball first and then into an oval drop like this and start rolling the clay with your finger to make ropes. So carefully roll it out. There should not be breaks. Make thin ropes like this. We are going to use these clay ropes and we are going to trace it on our design. So just like how I'm doing, make even ropes like this using your finger. Make it as thin as you can. Don't make it too thin because it all depends according to your taste and preference and according to the design size. So it's totally your choice that you can decide how much thick you want. I'm just making approximately 2 mm thickness for my work. So like this, we will roll out and make some nice thin strips of clay to start working on our design. So let's get this ready. As a next step, after making the clay strings like this, you can start gluing it to your design. So I'm going to just trace the design outline with a thin line of white glue using my dual tip nozzle from Faber Castell. After we trace it like this, you can start gluing the clay cords to the design. So carefully take the clay cord and start laying it on the design like how I'm doing. And carefully 
press it down to make it stick to the base like this. So go on tracing with the design, like creating a border, like how I'm doing. Try to avoid uh, breaks, like you don't have to break the clay in areas. Don't make it too short, make it lengthy cord so that it doesn't break, like how I'm doing. Make it a continuous line like this. So like this, we will stick to the entire design and we will get it ready. You can also use a toothpick to adjust the clay to the required area and carefully press it softly with your finger. Don't flatten the line, let the raised effect be there, but flatten it softly so that it gets stuck to the board like this. Like this, we will stick the entire design and we will get it ready. If you notice, I am almost done with the clay cord work. So like this, you can start sticking the design using the clay strings that we made. So just apply a line of glue to the required area like this. And then you can start sticking these clay cords to the design. So like this, carefully you need to stick area by area. Take your time to do this, don't be in a hurry. Like this, carefully stick these curves. You can adjust it after placing it using a toothpick or a pin or a needle. Make sure the joints are together. You should not have a gap in between. So press it down wherever there are joints like this we will start sticking area by area and we'll be getting it ready after completing the main design with the dough which we made with white glue and corn flour and coconut oil this is how the finished work will look once when this step is ready, you can start making a border. Now remember that you are doing this outline with the uh, clay ropes because we have to have a resist for each of the designs when you fill in the colors later. So make sure there are no gaps. So as a next step, I'm just going to apply to the border here a thin line of glue like this. And then we're going to take the clay ropes which we made and we're going to stick it on the four borders. Like this, we're going to stick on all the four sides and we're going to leave it to dry for a while. So let's get this done on all the other three sides too. In the same way, I have made another little thick cord and I am now sticking it on the edge of this plywood so that it creates a frame like this. Again, I've used white glue to stick this. So once when you finish it, you can join the edge like this and your clay work on the design will be done. Now this has to be left to dry for at least two to three hours and then it's ready for you to start painting it. After 2-3 hours of drying time, your board is now ready to apply the paints. Now make sure it's totally dry before you start with this process because it might vary from climate to climate conditions. So uh, take some white acrylic paint from Faber-Castell in your palette. There are many shades but right now we need only white for this activity so I've just taken some white paint here in my palette. Just add a drop of water for the sake of flow and use your grip handle brush from Faber-Castell to apply the colors. So just apply this white paint to the background as well as the clay work like how I'm doing and leave it to dry for 15 to 20 minutes under the fan. So let's apply this all over this board and get it ready. After applying the white acrylic paint from Faber-Castell to this base, uh, we leave it to dry for at least 15 to 20 minutes. In the drying time, we will get ready with our transparent colors. 
Now this white acrylic color that we applied to this base will act as a primer so that the clay will not draw a lot of paints. Okay, so just leave this to dry nicely and in the meanwhile we'll get ready in creating our transparent stained glass colors. To create your stained glass colors you will need clear glue. This is now liquid clear glue from Faber Castle which I'm using. This glue is easily available in craft shops and stationery shops so you can easily get it. Uh, just take some clear glue in your palette. I'm taking in three different cups here and I'm going to show you how to create your own stained glass colors at home using food color. So you can use liquid food color, just a drop, a little goes a long way so just add a drop to see how you're getting it. So this is liquid food color. Same way you can also use powder food color. I'm taking orange adding it with this and we are going to mix that up like that so as I mix with the liquid glue you will be getting a transparent color like this the same way I'm going to use green food color powder so I'm just going to take green color just a dot a little goes a long way as I said in the beginning not add too much just a drop will be enough so like this we will make green glass paint same way you can wash your brush and you can mix this liquid food color which we made so all the three colors look great because they are made out of food color and they are nice and bright so like this you can create your glass colors. You can also use ready-made glass colors but I tried experimenting with the liquid glue, the transparent liquid glue from Faber Castle and this really works great for this activity. So like this let's mix many colors and get it ready. In the same way you can even intermix these food colors that we have made. So for example if you want to make some brown I'm just going to take some orange to that you can add some green and if you mix it you will get a brown color so like this you can mix and make even new shades like how I'm doing so like this we can mix and make many colors and you will be able to get a wide range of transparent glass colors using the transparent clear glue. As a next step when your colors are all ready you can start applying it to the dry base. The white paint which we applied to the clay outline is now fully dry. Now we can start applying our colors. So I'm going to start with the sun design here. So I'm going to use red and orange there. So I'm just going to take the transparent glass color that we made with the clear glue and food color. I'm just going to apply that to this spot, carefully spreading it with my grip handle brush. When you're applying the color, make sure that the color doesn't go on the outline, the white outline. If it goes by accident, you can still go over it with white acrylic paint and you can cover it up but avoid going on it okay so using your brush carefully fill in the color like this make sure you drop the color and leave it to spread on its own and encourage the spreading with a brush like how I'm doing make it nice and bright application of the color so like this we will fill area by area like this Make sure you wash your brush and then go on to the next color. I'm now taking red. I'm going to drop this red to this part. This will take time. So take your time and do it patiently. As I said in the beginning, you can also use ready-made glass colors which are water-based and solvent-based available in the market for this activity. You can also make your own stained glass colors like this and you can use it. So like this, let's fill up the full design and get it ready. 
If you notice, I've taken the time to complete the entire design with the glass colors. I've used green, yellow, turquoise, dark blue. Same way for the sun, I've used orange, red, yellow. And for the bull, I have used yellow and brown to give the shaded effect. And then the patterns, I've used pink and purple. Same way red here, red and red here. For the horns, I have used red. So like this, you can fill your design with any color of your choice and get it ready. Once when your design is fully done, please check for areas. If you have covered the white lines with paints, just go over it with a dot of white acrylic paint from Faber-Castell and you can correct those mistakes. If not, you can proceed further with the next step. The next step is to use black acrylic paint and create a border on the outermost edge that we made with the clay on all four sides and your design is ready to be left to dry and you can varnish it up later. When your full base is totally dry after 2-3 hours, you are now ready to varnish your work. If you use solvent based glass colors, the piece has to dry for one day and then only you can do varnishing. If you use water based glass colors, you can leave it to dry for 3-4 hours and then it's ready for varnishing. If you're using food color and glue and if you're done your painting, leave it to dry for one day and then it's ready for varnishing. So once when your drying is fully done like this, it should be touch dry. The color should not stick to your finger. So make sure you test it in one corner and then you spray it with clear varnish. Clear varnish, there are many brands available in the market. Make sure you get a clear varnish and this is acrylic lacquer spray varnish. So I'm going to use this to spray it to my work just by spraying it. Make sure you get this rattle sound while spraying and then you can spray to your work. Once when you finish spraying, you will get a smooth shiny finish to your tile and the colors are fixed permanently. If you notice, our bull piece is totally dry. The one that we did with the clay work, the outlining and then we colored it with glass paints or using transparent colors which we made with glue is totally dry. In the same way, I have used other ideas and other variations of designs to try the same technique. You can try even the other designs like this and you can make it as a beautiful wall frame. I hope you like my tutorial in creating a stained canvas painting. Thanks for watching.